Hey everyone, welcome to a new mass transit video. In this video, I'm gonna talk about something new coming soon for mass transit. Uh, it's something that gets talked about a lot and, you know, frankly, I mean, things like Twitter and social media and even Reddit's kind of been blowing up about this lately. So I thought it would be kind of fun to dig in. I've been working on this for a couple months. Actually, probably more than that. I mean, I've always thought about it, but, you know, what I'm looking at sharing with you today is a new feature in mass transit and yes it is an outbox and it isn't the in-memory outbox we've talked about before which I think is totally legit and still totally usable and makes a lot of sense in most use cases but the name outbox is a bit overloaded so you know if, if I go and look and I just google .NET outbox I mean I can go through you know articles about the outbox pattern in ASP.NET where they talk about writing to disk and then writing to an event bus you know same kind of deal there uh, you know, there's articles, you know, by other people talking about tweets and microservices.io and patterns and all these different things around the outbox pattern. Uh, even Jeremy Miller lately has kind of jumped in and he's kind of breathing a little life into Jasper and talking about an outbox and message handling and how to deal with that. Um, I haven't looked at that much. I just saw tweets about it from him about having an outbox with Martin support, which that's cool. Uh, you know, everybody's favorite tries to reference, you know, the, the end service bus outbox, which within a message handler is able to begin that transaction, do that dedupe, run that and store that information. Uh, and just transactional outbox in general, just being a pattern of writing to a table and within the same transaction, writing to an outbox table that then gets relayed to the actual message broker. So what I'm going to cover today is some fresh bits uh i they're just now going to hit develop and i'm going to release a sample with that that i'm going to cover in this video and i'm going to kind of go through how it works so first kind of the constraints that have been put in place um entity framework core it's definitely written to take advantage of entity framework core i i've taken the high road and said that a lot of people using ef core and whatever database engine they're using are going to be able to take advantage of this it's all those restores that it talks to are transactional. So we're going to have, you know, the full DB transaction being supported through that. Uh, and it makes it easy for things like including the outbox tables in your migration. Um, it works with any message broker in theory. I mean, you know, it's these are like I said, these are fresh bits. I haven't tested with all of them, but it, but it's end to end comprehensive. And when I say it works with your message broker, if you're using RabbitMQ and using routing keys, the outbox is routing key aware. It, it, whatever transport you're using, whatever special properties, like if it's Azure Service Bus, it's going to handle like partition key, session ID, all of those things that you need and care about when you're producing messages to the specific transports is going to be handled just the way as if you were publishing them before. So it's, it's pretty slick. Uh, I think it's been comprehensive. And that's, that's why it's taken me so long to work through this is you, you think, no, how hard can it be? You know, the, the famous line, but the reality is the edge cases kill you. And it's just like, okay, well, I'm going to take a weekend to do that. And as part of this, I've actually completely changed the way send, send transports work within mass transit to use a consistent single send transport with different providers for the different types. So I'm pretty stoked about it. It's been a lot of work. I wrote the sample today to kind of just get a feel for kicking the tires from an end to end perspective. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of share with you what we've put together. So I'm taking advantage of, I'm using the outbox in two separate ways in the sample. And I want to show you how that code is configured. So I'm going to first look at my API. This is an ASP.NET controller. And what it has is it has a registration service. And this is the common pattern I see for the outbox type approach of I'm doing something transactionally in a database and I want to be able to capture those messages within that transaction and then have something pick them up and send them. So I have a registration service which depends on my DB context and also depends on publish endpoint because that's how from the mass transit docs your business components should produce events. So it's going to take that registration, it's going to add it to the DB context, it's going to publish an event. It's going to call save changes async. 
And this is just a check I've put in for the DB update to say if I get a unique constraint violation, I'm going to throw a specific exception so that I can use that domain specific exception in my controller to handle that. Um, you can see that a registration is going to have a member ID and an event ID. Those are the unique identifiers for that registration. And in the registration map, which I believe is in the DB context, why I don't see it there, I don't know. Um, it has it generates its own ID, but the properties of registration ID, registration date, member ID, event ID. I use a unique index to try to catch duplicates here. So if they hit the controller twice, it's going to return a conflict and it's going to say that it was duplicated. And this is just standard entity framework code. There is no mass transit here whatsoever. The only mass transit piece is that I'm producing this event that says a registration was submitted. And this is how a lot of people I've seen and have asked about this have, have put this, buried it down in their business components. It isn't a concern of the controller. It's just something that they do as part of their domain. And so for the controller in this web API, it's very simple. It takes a dependency on iRegistration service. It takes a submit of this registration model from the front end, which of course we're going to use Swagger to do. Uh, and then it just calls submit registration. And if it is okay, it returns, you know, this little blob of JSON back to the caller. And if it gets that duplicate registration uh, exception, it throws a conflict. So gonna kind of jump into this, kind of show how it works, but that's kind of the high level. Going back to the configuration of the service, we're adding that registration services scoped. We're adding our controllers. We're adding our registration DB context. Again, we're just using Entity Framework Core. It's straight out of the box. Uh, we're getting our connection string, we're doing some SM migrations, which I'm not using in this sample, but whatever, I wipe the database every startup. I set them in batch size so that I get some performance optimizations out of uh, Entity Framework in that case. And then I add mass transit. Now there are no consumers or sagas in this API. This is purely just a business domain component that's producing events as part of being within my API controller. So no message consuming, no sagas, nothing in this web API project, it's purely just that. Uh, it's using RabbitMQ, and I'm setting auto start here for a reason that I'm not going to go into, but basically just so I get good health checking, so I know that the bus is up or down. Uh, and then I add this thing called the Entity Framework on ramp. Now I'm bouncing back and forth on names in this. Everybody thinks outbox and outbox and outbox and outbox, but it, it's fairly overloaded and it's unclear. So this might end up being outbox. I don't know what it is right now. I got too many overloaded words in my brain. But add Entity Framework on ramp is this way to get messages into the database that we then sweep out and transfer over to the broker. So naming is hard and I will likely change this name several times before it's released. But nonetheless, this is what we have. I'm also going to add a hosted service, which is my recreate database hosted service. I love this hosted service. It's awesome. It literally goes out and destroys my database and recreates them from scratch every time. So super fun there. Always a pleasure to have around. Um, the other piece I have here that's relevant to MT is this Add Entity Framework on Ramp Delivery Service. And you can see it uses that DB context as part of that. This is intended to be fully multibus aware, where if you want to have different outbacks for different buses, all that stuff is expected to be handled. It should be cool. Uh, I think most of it's covered, but again, testing is limited. You know, a lot of happy paths uh, and some sad paths. Uh, in this case, because of the test we're doing, I'm setting the sweep interval to a second. So every second it's going to look and see if there's messages to transfer and then deliver those out to the broker. Um, I'm still adding this lock statement provider because I'm using Postgres. I don't know why I haven't figured out a way to make that hidden yet, but for now that's what's there. And I do some weird logging things. I don't even think I use that actually. So that's weird. Um, yeah, don't need that either. Whatever. Um, so that's the API. Pretty simple, no sagas, no consumers, just an event producer that's going to hit in there. Now to observe all this stuff, that's where we go to the back end of the application. And I'm really walking through this sample because you'll be able to download this and try it out yourself. You know, and I'll show you it working, but I don't want to just blast into it working without explaining how this works because this is kind of the deep dive bits. The rest is just working functions, you know, not super exciting. Um, you can see that this is some early bits if you're sneaking a peek. I actually have project references to mass transit to suss out all this stuff. I'm still waiting for the NuGet packages to get produced. Um, but now I'm going to look at my worker. So my worker, also pretty simple. It's a standard .NET new worker, you know, which you always have to remember to type worker because if you do console, you get like 
hello world with nothing so it's pretty funny but uh i'll learn eventually i'm getting used to this using namespace thing and these minimal startups i mean it's it's i'm trying to go with the flow i'm trying to be fresh so it's all good um but this is my background worker service and this is actually a separate process running it's connecting to RabbitMQ the same way it actually has some endpoints and i'm going to get those endpoints in here and i'm adding some consumers so i have multiple different things here First, I have a notify registration consumer. This is a brain dead simple consumer that just looks at that registration submitted event and writes out to the log, member so-and-so registered for the event. One and done, easy peasy, simple logging. Technically, this would like probably do something, but I don't even know what it would do. Maybe it'd send a message to him, I have no idea. Uh, just trying to put some case in here and have a simple consumer that responds to that event. Um, I also have a registration state machine because I like state machines and state machines are transactional and they talk to Entity Framework Core. So I want those to be in the same transaction as what is part of the other half of the new component of Mass Transit, which is a persistent Entity Framework KR based inbox outbox. So I don't really know whether to call this like the inbox outbox or the something outbox or the Entity Framework outbox or the in outbox. I really have no idea. I'm just trying to come up with a name here and I just, these terms are so overloaded, it's just I want to make sure it's understood. This isn't the in-memory outbox of before that just delayed the sends. This is actually an entirely new animal. So my state machine, it's doing, it's in response to that event, it's capturing some data in the saga, it's transferring to a registered state, it's publishing a send registration email, it's saying, hey, if you got cheap on me and I haven't been told to retry, like say it costs 50 bucks, less than 50 bucks, I'm going to actually throw an exception just to kind of simulate a failure because uh, how else am I going to simulate a failure? Uh, and then I'm going to then publish an add event and 10 D. So sometimes I'm going to publish one other times I'm going to publish two and it's all successful. Everything will be great. It'll be super awesome. Uh, super simple saga. Uh, the state instance is pretty tame. You know, just the basic stuff there. The other, the only other key interesting part of this is how I'm configuring the inbox outbox thingamajob. Um, so instead of using in memory outbox, which has been the staple of mass transit for years, I'm saying use entity framework outbox and I'm telling it what DB context to use and I'm giving it the service provider because it needs access to all sorts of scopes and all that fun stuff. So it needs to be able to resolve things from the container, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, so that's the use entity framework outbox. I'm registering it on this receive endpoint for this saga, and I put some ridiculous retry intervals here because why not, right? Yeah, it's just for funsies. Um, so that's the definition so that the endpoint that this state machine gets configured on is going to have that inbox outbox thing that's backed by entity framework and part of my transaction. Of course, my saga is in the same transactional state. It's entity framework repository using the same DB context because that's how transactions are shared and I'm just telling it that I'm using Postgres. Now, everything else is just auto configured. There is one additional piece up here, this add entity framework outbox. And what that does is it adds the underlying components for the outbox context factory, which is, very, it works very similar to the way I wrote the Saga repositories for EF and just the whole structure there is, of initiating transactions. And it's even smart enough so that if the outbox has started a transaction against the database and a saga comes into it, it uses that existing transaction. It doesn't create a new one or conflict with it. So it makes the saga processing all part of that transaction. And if you're just using DB context, you're already part of that transaction of this inbox outbox thingy. That's this entity framework outbox. So, Pretty comprehensive. All your business components just worry about DB context and mass transit will handle the unit of work transaction for the inbox outbox. And what that gives us is by endpoint, by message ID. So if you publish a message and it makes three, it goes to three consumers, all three of those consumers could use the outbox and there won't be any conflict on the table because it bases it based on the receive endpoint queue name and the actual message ID. So for that message ID, this is going to give you that exactly once processing of I'm going to consume the message, produce events, and if I've already consumed it but failed and retried publishing events, 
all of that retry processing will no longer rerun the consumer. So that item potency that the use in memory outbox requires you to think about is now handled by mass transit in the entity framework outbox. So if your consumer's already been called and not thrown an exception, MT is going to record that fact, save that transaction out to the database, and then try to deliver those messages to the broker. So super flexible there. It really kind of gives us that survivability. And it's the same underlying feature as the, the bus outbox, which is actually just making it so that people not even using mass transit consumers, just writing an API controller, can send to the outbox and have that same experience. So really two completely separate feature sets, one where I can produce, take non-message-based consumers and write to the outbox with them and use a sweeper to sweep them up and deliver them to the broker. And then also an inbox outbox to give us exactly once execution of the message consumers and then ensure that the messages are persisted in the database and then looped out to the broker under a separate database transaction. So keeping everything as part of that transaction completion state. So that way, if your consumers are writing out to a database, or in the case of the Saga, which writes out to the database, all of that work is completed as a single transaction and therefore nice and atomic and happy and great and fun. So if the database transaction nukes out, you don't get the duplicate messages anymore. So really super slick stuff. Uh, you don't have to worry about the item potency. There's no edge cases, at least there shouldn't be. Anyway, so yeah, so the registration state machine is there. I have two consumers that just consume those events that are produced by the state machine to show that they only get executed once. Uh, they're dumb and they have no dependencies, so they should just rock and roll. Um, so let's go into some code. Let, let's actually just demo it. So I'm going to go out here to Swagger. And I have the registration API set up to rock. I have an event ID a member ID and a payment of 100 bucks. We're gonna go the happy path first and we're gonna make this run. I'm gonna hit execute. I'm going to go out to the console and I can see that in my API project, the bus had been started. I hadn't done anything yet. I did the create send transport for the registration submitted. I declared the exchange. I did a send. The outbox in the log debug says the outbox was sent, message ID, outbox ID and that the outbox was delivered and everything is done. So those messages have now been delivered to the broker. They're deleted from the database. Everything is good. That outbox is done. An interesting aspect about the outbox and the way that I've implemented it, it's scoped. So when you try to get like an iPublish endpoint, which is a scoped interface, or I send endpoint provider, or I request client, uh, I request client doesn't actually go through the outbox because that would be really dumb. Um, but the the publish and send endpoint providers will make it so that the messages, if you do multiple publishes within the same scope, those are all tied to the same outbox and the order that those publishes were generated is maintained in the sequence order in the outbox. So they will be delivered to the transport in that same order so that you do not have any ordering issues with the outbox. And the outbox delivery service actually uses a locking algorithm against each outbox to ensure that if you have you know, multiple instances running that service, running against the same database tables, that it's actually able to lock those outbox instances and deliver those messages. So it really makes it kind of clean, keeps them in order, and allows us to scale out. Um, the logic on that can probably be optimized depending upon the database engine, but so far so good. We're just kind of using the base out of the out of the box entity framework locking, the same that the inbox outbox uses. So it's that same transactional locking. Um, so yeah, the message was delivered from the web API. And then we can see here, member one registered for event 27. We received the notify registration event on that endpoint for the notify registration consumer. We can also see that our Saga picked it up. It created and added a Saga instance. We received that initial registration submitted method, which says the consumer is done. The outbox then also records the fact that that consumer finished. It's never going to call that state machine again because it's no, it's done. And at this point, the transaction is committed to the database. Now the outbox says, oh, well, now I have messages to deliver. It's going to create the send transport. It's going to declare the exchange. It's going to note, then it's going to send the message. And you can see the consumers are so fast. The notification send registration email consumer has already run and received that message 
before the broker is even marked, before the sending process is even logged that it was sent and the outbox was sent. Because again, RabbitMQ is stupid fast. You can see that these sequence numbers are on here that it's writing it out. It sent the first message, which was the send registration email. It sent the second message, which is the add event attendee, which was also written out here. In this case, it was actually processed after the outbox sent it and the adding member member ID as an attendee. So the outbox was delivered, the two messages were removed, and the outbox was marked as completed. So two completely different things shown here. One is the bus outbox or the actual outbox that is not using mass transit at all. It's just writing to the database. The sweeper is then going out and taking the, the delivery service is then going out and pulling those messages out of the outbox and getting them to the transport. And that's only running in the API side. Here is the separate worker service. As you can see, just a basic consumer did its thing, but the consumers, the Saga, that's running its own version of the inbox outbox that's fully transactional, is running that Saga, creating the instance, consuming the marking that is consumed so that the Saga is done processing, and then notifying the members, doing all that other good stuff. So super cool stuff there. Let's try to break it now. Let's, let's change, let's get cheap. Let's go to 49.95. And let's say member two is going to register on the cheap and let's execute there. Now this is going to have some exception noise, so that's to be expected. Um, we can see that it delivered the message. So that was from the web API. That was the delivery service pulling it from the bus out box and pulling it in. But now we got to scroll past all this garbage. So that was our first one. Now we have our second one. Now our first consumer was happy as could be. Member two registered for event 87. Great, awesome, no big deal there. I received the notify registration consumer that consumed the whatever that thing was. Now the saga is gonna come up. It's created and it's added. And you see a warning in here because it's gonna trigger into the retry. It failed to process that message. You can see my application exception, totally random, but you didn't pay for quality service. Nasty call stack of all the stuff going back down all the way back down to here you can see the retry then ticks you know 100 milliseconds later you can see that same saga is being created again nothing was persisted in the database because we never actually committed that transaction because we threw an exception and blew all the way back and went to a retry loop so this time we created the saga we added the saga instance we actually mark it as received the outbox consumed and the saga has done its work and now notifying member two, adding member two, all the rest of the processing, outbox continues processing, and good to go. And each of those only happened once. When we had the exception, none of those messages that were published were ever hit on the broker because they were sitting in that transaction that never got committed. Everything gets rolled back, everything starts over. Good times. So that's the new entity framework based outbox for mass transit. I feel like this is going to cover so many of the use cases that people have asked about many, many times. Um, so I'm kind of excited to at least kind of get it into the develop branch so that people can start kicking the tires on it and, you know, figure out, you know, where we're at, what it needs, so on and so forth. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty stoked about it. I mean, this has been one of the things that people constantly come back to and say, hey, but Mass Transit doesn't have a real outbox. I'm not looking at you, Jimmy Bogart, at all. I'm just saying, you know, we can read your tweets. You know, we know what's up. So with this, we're giving Mass Transit a real outbox that is persistent and durable and transactional and not only works in message consumers for item potent exactly once delivery to your consumers, but also works for non-consumers that are just using iPublish endpoint or iSend endpoint provider.send to produce messages from domain components such as our registration service that have just a simple publish called from a simple API controller that doesn't really do anything and know anything about mass transit. There's no mass transit reference whatsoever in anywhere in that controller. I'm just using a business opponent that happens to call iPublish endpoint publish as part of its transaction that it does with safe changes async. And if you're using a unit of work middleware or something like that, that's going to try to come under the covers and call DB context save changes async for you outside of your business component, That'll work too, because if you don't save the messages to the outbox and that transaction completes, which you can manage entirely, here I'm just saving it this way, those messages never get sent because the transaction never completed. So 
pretty stoked about it. It's uh, it's it's pretty cool, and I think that just the adoption of Entity Framework Core in general is high enough that this is a good place to start. Uh, I know people have identified other transactional, in quotes, data sources that are NoSQL, such as like MongoDB's latest versions. Um, so we'll see if that's something that comes next. All of these primitives are in the base mass transit assembly for like the outbox mechanism and processing. So they're semi decoupled and it should be not trivial because it's always the details of how you deal with the transaction in another data store, but like to build like a MongoDB version of this that'll work with cross collection transactions. So, um, so yeah. Um, the only other thing I wanted to bring up, and I know we're long in the tooth here. I mean, we're almost at half an hour, which I haven't done a video that long in forever. Uh, mostly just because people stop watching after 10 minutes, but that's cool. You know, I get it. You're going to go play with the bits and then come back if you have questions. Um, I've tried to make it easy to add this to any DB context. Uh, this one's a Saga DB context because I actually have the Saga in there, but any DB context will work. I just have three extension methods that add the inbox state entity, the outbox message entity, and then the outbox state entity. So the last one is only used if you're using the, the bus outbox. Um, maybe that's a good name for it. Bus outbox and outbox. Yeah, that might be a cool thing. I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, and this just sets up all the mappings for the entities. You can see the messages, the properties, the headers, all of that stuff is in there. Uh, the identifying stuff for whether it's an inbox message ID or an outbox, uh, whether it's tied to an inbox message consumer or whether it's actually just an outbox from the bus outbox. The same table's used because why not, right? It just keeps the deployment simple and keeps the migrations easy. Easily to set up with migration so you can deploy it, no custom SQL scripts or anything to run. And you can override these so you can specify custom table names if you want to change them for different DB contexts. I'm sure there's other flexibility options that people that really crank the heck out of EF core to 11 will say, oh, it'd be great if you could do this. And I'll be like, great, I accept pull requests because that's so awesome. Um, but yeah, so I'll get this sample posted up here shortly. Uh, as long as, and I'll make it so the sample references the NuGets instead of the actual local uh, local project references on my rig. But um, yeah, so feedback is always welcome. Hit us up on the Discord. I'll post the link on the Twitters, and hopefully, you know, we can get some responses there from someone like might want to say, "Oh, wow, you you're getting a real outbox. That's awesome." So um, pretty stoked about it. Again, I'm gonna wrap it up. Thanks for joining. As always. Uh, what, what's the phrase that YouTubers do? Like and subscribe? Uh, whatever. Yeah, it doesn't matter. The information is out there. I want feedback on this stuff, so let me know. Take care. Thanks a lot for joining. Peace out.